Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise as we take a look at the double A level, the level that we don't really show too much of, but we have some pretty intriguing prospects. And just looking at how we are doing at the double A level, actually better than our triple A, surprisingly. Teddy Polititis is the top prospect at double A level. He is 19 years old, a flamethrower from the right side. I guess not from the right side of the mound, but as a righty. And Tommy Knight, watch out for him. Now, we do not have a future plan at first base except Tommy Knight. He is hitting over 320, and Jesus Aguilar has a two-year deal. But at the end of that two years, watch out for Tommy Knight. If Jesus Aguilar isn't still on the roster, Tommy Knight is a candidate to be that first baseman for us of the future. He's only 23 years old. Chucky Robinson is a 25-year-old catcher. I think he's pretty good. I highlighted Nate Barron earlier in the season. He's pretty good as well. He's 25, though. J.R. Bonifacio is a left-handed pitcher. He actually went down the potential a little bit. Maybe because of his production, it hasn't been as good as advertised. We'll have to see how his progression goes. C.J. Carter was the relief pitcher we drafted last season in the draft. It looks like he's doing pretty good in progressing. He's still young. And then Egwobu is still... Looking good. He's 20 years old. See potential. I don't know what I'm going to get out of him. I guess time will tell. Dustin Breeze is hitting 247. Kane King is hitting 247. I'm hoping that that potential goes up to, to a C after this season. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. But then looking at other guys, Armando Walker used to be a C potential. He went down, but he's still 23 years old. One thing that he brings to the table is that speed. He's at like 90 speed. And then the rest of the guys are just guys, to be honest, below that. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as acquiring prospects, but I do plan on making trades in the offseason to at least get some good prospects, especially in the infield. Now, I do want to check out Teddy Palatinus. He is having an excellent, excellent campaign in season one, 10 and four. His whip is low. He's winning games. I mean, he's doing everything you would want out of a top pitching prospect. And like I said, he's only 19. I mean, he's got time to develop. I do not have to rush him up. Our starting pitching rotation at the MLB level is pretty good right now. And I think that, you know, having a good rotation allows some of your young prospects to develop. So let's check out Nate Barron at the plate. He is on a nine game hit streak and he will ground out and that one will end the first inning. So let's check out Teddy Polititis on the mound, and he does face a pretty good team here opposite of us at the AA level, and this will be a true test. So here's Tavares at the plate. He hits one down the left field line. That's Armando Walker with that speed I highlighted earlier. He will run that one down easily as that brings up Bruce Hunter hitting 291 in the three-hole. That's a hard ground ball, but scooped up by Barron, thrown to first base, and that is going to be an out, and there we go. So let's move on to the top of the second. Here is Armando Walker, who we just highlighted his speed, and he shows off his bat on this swing. That one is not coming back. That's a home run. And Armando Walker, I do like him. He's about 65 overall, but deep potential. His base running is his calling card, and I just want to see him get that potential up so that he won't regress. And here is Dustin Breeze at the plate. He is a young guy and an outfielder in our organization. We'll see how he develops as well. He gets the hit on that one. That brings up Chucky Robinson, the 25-year-old prospect. I do like having him in the organization because I don't have many catching prospects. He made the All-Star game as well. He goes to opposite field in his first at-bat, and he is hitting in the eight hole for our double-A team. Got to have good hitters at the bottom of your lineup too. And that brings up Benji Halama, who was a draft pick a season ago. He goes to left field, and that one will get by the glove of Tavares, trying to field it, coming up, throwing home, but he can't get it, and he throws a third, and we advance both runners into scoring position off of the air by Tavares and left, and that brings up Kane King, who was one of our draft picks in season one. He goes deep to left field, and that is going to be run down, and we do get two on the board there for Petty, Teddy Polititis as you move on to the fifth inning. It looks like he's not surrendering any runs. This is Shane Bauer at the plate. He goes to left center field. That one gets all the way to the wall. A leadoff double here, but he rounds second a little too hard. But no, he's going to go for three. But he gets thrown out a little too greedy on that one as we move on to the bottom of the fifth. Here is Palatitis still on the mound. And you can see 53 pitches through the first four innings. Looking good. 
Brendan Davis, who's hitting in the eighth hole. Let's see what he can do. He hits one down the left field line, past the glove of Kane King. And that one will be a hit for uh, the opposite team. As now we got a man on first base. Let's see if Palatitis can get out of this one. Ground ball to Tommy Knight. He fields it, but not cleanly. And he steps on first base. I'm surprised that one wasn't a clean grab by him. He is a great fielder as well as a great hitter. As Palatitis gets the next batter to swing and miss that fastball. Remember, he's got 99 velocity. As now Tommy Knight back to the plate. Let's see what he can do. You know, he's like one of those guys that I'm looking at. I have a close eye on. He is not fast at all. 16 speed, obviously. First basemen aren't really fast anyway. But he's got power to him. I want to see him hit for average. That's going to really be a good sign for our organization in the future. That brings up the next batter. That is Taylor Jones. And he is a young prospect. He is not expected to do too much. But we'll see what he can do. Dustin Breeze to the plate. He's 23 years old. He goes up the middle, and that one will drive a run in. Let's see if we will score, and we will. Three to one. They're three to nothing here in this game. And now let's see if Politis can hold it down for the rest of the game as that one brings in Tommy Dewanis out of the bullpen. And looks like our man Politis' day is over. And let's see if we can keep this lead, three to one, as we get a ground ball to first base with guys on second and third in scoring position. And now that rolls over the lineup here. Dribbler right back to the pitcher, and it's gonna be an overthrow to first base. And look at this now, two runs will come in to score with the throw home, not in time. Wow, that one blows that lead just like that. It's three to three. And Tommy Duenas, well, it didn't look pretty for him on that throw. And here is a fly ball to left field. And with a guy on third base that has 90 speed, that one is going to be easily a tag situation. And that one will take the lead here for the Riders. And now we move on to the ninth inning. They end up tacking on two more runs after that with Benji Halama to the plate. And he watches one. That looked like it was out of the zone, but they call it strike three anyway. And we end up losing this game three to six, but our man Palatitis had a really good game on the mound. Dustin Breeze went two for three as well. Armando Walker hit that home run earlier, and he went two for four, and that's a glimpse of the double-A level. As we head back to the major league level, 64 and 52 at this point, we are tied for the Oakland Athletics for the lead, and we play them once again in a four-game road trip. And honestly, they are really good, and they know how to win these games. Brandon Morrow is now on the mound here in the top of the ninth inning with one out. We got guys on first and second. Let's see if we can win this one on the road. So here's Billy Hamilton at the plate. He swings at one just maybe a tad bit late, and it will be an infield fly. And now two outs. Romeo Tapia, who is hitting 375 since being moved up, and runners, both runners on the move. But look at this. It looks like this may have been a communication error. And take a look. We get tagged out in the rundown. And wow, we didn't even give Tapia a chance. I don't know what the runners were doing on that one. Maybe they saw a sign they maybe mist mistook for a hit and run. But it ends up being the end of the game. So we actually dropped that one three to two. And then we split the next two. But we dropped three in that series. So now Oakland has that lead right back. So we head into the next series versus the Minnesota Twins. Now up five to four here in the bottom of the 10th inning. This is one of those top AL teams as well as they are looking to push towards the playoffs. And there we give up a hit. And that brings up Matt Olson, the former Oakland Athletic. Now with the Twins, he swings and misses. And there is the second out of the inning. Let's see if Nate Jones can get out of this one. Mitch Garver, swing and miss, and we get the victory here, five to four. That is some clutch pitching right there from Nate Jones. Two strikeouts there, and we get out of that inning and out of that game with the victory, five to four, as Scooter Jeanette goes three for five. As we keep advancing on in the month of August, as we get to the Texas Rangers series, we're up two to three, or yeah, two out of three in this series out of four games set. And now here we are with a chance to at least get three out of four in this series and make our move and keep moving at the division crown. Here is Tapia with a chance to kind of redeem himself at the plate 
and he didn't get a chance in the last one. And that one drops, and that one will walk it off. Scooter Jeanette comes in to score. Tapia is hitting really extremely well, and that one is a walk off for him. And I love to see it because we needed that offensive uh, firepower from our outfield. Honestly, Yasiel Puig is the only person hitting decent right now. Billy Hamilton has come back down to earth, but we get some bad news coming out of that game. Pablo Lopez, torn labrum out for the year. Now, if there wasn't a bigger blow than this, it's, I mean, we traded for him. This was our ace. We have to make up for it now, and we're going to have to make a tough decision. Pablo Lopez is now out. He was our ace, 25 years old. He will come back next year strong. I'm not worried about that. But what are we going to do this year? We have top prospect Jimmy Pelko. He is a lefty. He is 18 years old. But I just do not want to rush him up right now. He is doing extremely well develop-wise, development-wise. And I just don't know if that's the answer right at this moment. Teddy Polititis, who we just saw play, he's also an option, but he's 19 years old, years old, still in his first year in the minors as well. He's progressing. I don't think he's ready yet as well. So we decide to go to free agency, and we look at some available free agents. I kind of hate how MLB The Show, if guys sit in free agency, their uh, ratings kind of decline there. But I look at Cole Hamels, and I kind of look at the rating adjustment we're going to make. We're going to put everything back to what it was, so he'll get plus four in the stamina and plus five in the rest of his pitching uh, attributes there. And we will sign him. A one-year deal doesn't even hurt, and he will take it $520,000. That's an easy deal for us. We had the money to spend. And we put him in the rotation. He will now assert himself into that fifth spot and be another lefty there for us in the rotation. So now we move on to the next part of our the month of August, and we really need to start winning some games as we face the Washington Nationals here in a quick manage situation. And with Tyler Glass now on the mound again, he has yet to win a game for us. So let's see if we can get it for him in this game. But Washington jumps out to a 2-0 lead, and it looks like they are not looking back. Glass now last to about the eighth inning. And we try a last-minute comeback, but Ryan Stanek comes in and gives up two more. And then they add on one more and end up with the win, 7-2. to two. And Glass now does get the loss. So he is winless so far in his two Kings starts. And now here we are once again in the next game. Let's see if we can steal one back from the Nationals. It's Yasiel Puig in the bottom of the ninth, down by one run. Guy on first base. Let's see if he can come through. He is 0 for 3 in this game. Ken Giles on the mound. He goes the opposite field. That one sneaks through. So that is a single here. No outs in the inning. That brings up Jesus Aguilar to the plate. But me, I'm looking to play a little small ball here. His bunting is only at 33. I want to get somebody who is a better bunter. I look at Jake Cave. He's decent, but he's a little better. Not really great, but at least maybe he can lay one down. Let's see what he can do here with guys on first and second. That is the plan here. Move them over, over. So here's Ken Giles. He's going to throw one low, and that one is out of the zone. But look at Cave. He gets a bat on it, and that is going to be a single. So, wow. Base is loaded here. Bottom of the ninth inning. No outs. That brings up David Bodie, leading our team in average this season. He hits one deep to right field. That one looks deep enough to tag both runners on second and third, and we will send both of them, and it will score one, and we do advance one to third base. Puig slides in safe. So now, guys on the corners, the rookie Corey Lee at the plate, hitting 232 now. Wow, that average has really dipped down, but a chance to be the hero in this one. He hits a chopper right back to the pitcher, but Giles goes to second and tries to turn two, and it won't work. That is a questionable play by Ken Giles. Instead of getting the out at home, look. I mean, Puig was halfway down the baseline. That was an easy play home. But maybe he thought that this could have been an easy double play. Instead, he goes to second, and it doesn't work. Corey Lee has the speed at catcher to beat it out. And we get the victory here. Two to one. What a ninth inning. What a way to end that game. And here we go. We strung... We bounce back and strung together a win 
And let's see if we can continue this winning into the next series as we face the New York Yankees, who have a similar record, only one game difference. And here is Alex Wood out, out on the mound. Actually, that's not Alex Wood. That's Cole Hamels. And now this is what it looks like. The month of August, it's been up and down. A lot of losses, uh, uh, quite, I mean, the same number of wins. I mean, that's kind of the way this, t this second half of this season has been going. Not as hot as that May we had. The month of May was hot. But let's see what we can do with Cole Hamels. And now if he can really contribute because Pablo Lopez is out for this season. So now the Yankees start out with two hits. So guys on first and second here with no outs. Glaber Torres swings at one out of the zone. And that is going to be his first strikeout as a New Orleans King. That brings up Stanton. He's swinging. He's missing. Two outs here in this inning. And that brings up Aaron Judge. Let's see if Hamels can get out of this jam. Ground ball. Bodie comes up throwing. And that one will get us out. There we go. Nice start to his career with the Kings. Not really a career, but I guess the last month and a half as we push towards the playoffs. So that brings up Jake Cave here in the second inning. And he is walking. So now guy on first base. Let's see what Scooter Jeanette can do. He's hitting 283, much better than last season where he hit only 220. He drives one deep to right field. Let's see if it will get over the head of Florio. No, he runs it down. And now this game remains 0-0 as we move on to the top of the third inning. Here is a ground ball to the right side, away from the shift. And that is a single here. And now that brings up the middle of this lineup. Giancarlo Stanton to the plate. He hits one hard to left field. And let's see what Clint Frazier can do. And that's a terrible angle to that ball. It gets all the way to the wall. And that one will be an RBI double for Stanton. 1-0 here for the Yankees as this inning does continue. Aaron Judge comes to the plate, hits one right back to Hamels. One run there in that inning, but they take the lead. Now that moves us into the top of the fourth inning. And here is Hamels still handling business. He faces a batter who drives one deep off of the left field wall over the head of Clint Frazier. I like Clint Frazier better in right field. I mean, when I had him in right field for a little bit, when Puig was out last year, he was doing spectacular. But then that brings up Gary Sanchez, and he makes us pay. It's a home run there, his 30th of the season, 440 feet. And now we go down 5 nothing in this game as we fast forward to the fifth inning. Here is Corey Lee, who I'm trying to just get his average up, get his confidence going, because we're going to need him towards the end of this season as we make our run at the playoffs. Jake Cave at the plate. He swings and misses, and that was way out of the zone. A little anxious on that one. James Paxton has his fourth strikeout of the game as that brings up Scooter. He's swinging and missing at a low one as well. So two outs in this inning. We had a leadoff single, and we won't even move him over. Clint Frazier watching that one three straight strikeouts and man we are not doing anything in this game six to one that brings up lee in the seventh inning again he hits a chopper up the middle for his second hit of this game and paxton with 103 pitches he does stay in the game as that brings up cave who watches one in the dirt but Corey lee is going to advance on that one he's got speed and now we got a man in scoring position let's see if cave can bring him in and on a three and two count no outs here in this inning. He drives one deep, and that one is crushed. It will hit off the wall, and that's an RBI double here for Jake Cave. He's got the power versus lefties and righties, and that's the power you like to see as that brings up Scooter, and they do take uh, Paxton out of the game, and he goes to right field. Another shot to the gap, and that is going to be an RBI single, 6-3. to three. Still no outs in the inning. We eventually get one out as that brings up Marcus Simeon. He gets hit by a pitch. So base is loaded here with the man you want at the plate, Yasiel Puig, with one out. Chopper right to the shortstop. It's a tailor-made double play. And we do not get any more runs in that inning with bases loaded and one out in the middle of our lineup up as we move on to the ninth inning. Now a 9-3 to game, and Billy Hamilton flies out to left field. And that's how this one ends. And the Yankees come in and beat us pretty badly. I mean, James Paxton had an amazing game pitching. Eight strikeouts through six innings. And they get the win. Eight hits to their 15. And Cole Hamels in his debut gets the loss. 
But we move on to the next game. Now we can redeem ourselves once again like we did in the National Series. Down by one run in the ninth inning. Aroldis Chapman on the mound. Let's see what he can do. Here is Zach Cozart who got the start in this one. He's just looking. That strike three as that brings up Ramiel Tapia with two outs. He hits one deep to the gap and it will get down. He rounds first, heads to second. And let's see, I think he's thinking three on this one, but he rounds second a little too hard and thinks about it twice and gets thrown out. And that one will bring us to extras at least as that brings up Marcus Simeon here in the bottom of the 10th inning with a chance to be the hero. Two for four in this game. He gets a hanger and that one is crushed. Game over. They kept Chapman in in the 10th inning as well, and Simeon hits his 27th home run of the season. And there we go. We walk it off, and we do get the victory here versus the Yankees, getting our revenge from that first game in the series. And that one will get us the victory. We had 19 hits in this game. Look at everybody. Jake Cave, 4 for 5. Tapia, 3 for 5. They have been amazing for us since joining the squad at the MLB level. So you can just see, we're sitting here at 76 and 62. And our month of August has been a shaky one. Up and down, you can just see in our last 10, we're five and five. We're still three games back from the Oakland Athletics. But we just need to find that consistency. If we can do that, we will be good. Now, looking at the stats here at the end of the month of August, going into September, David Bodie leads our team in average. Jake Cave in 53 at bats is hitting 302. Good start for him. And then Tapia hitting 297. Those two guys are really contributing well since being moved up. Jesus Aguilar is slightly hurt. He'll be back in about a week. Marcus Simeon hitting around what I thought he would hit. 285 was the mark he hit the last two seasons. He's hitting around that. Puig has come back down to earth. He's hitting about 270 or so. Scooter hitting a little below that. Billy Hamilton has definitely come down. I thought he would hit around 250, and that's what is, that's probably what he's going to hit. Remember, he was hitting like 390-something in limited action with platooning in center field. It seems like he's come way down. Stanek out of the bullpen is doing decent. I want to see some more out of him. Glass now, though, has still yet to get a win since we've acquired him. You can see he's ice cold right now. A little bit of buyer's remorse on that? I don't know. I guess it's too early to tell. Pablo Lopez is obviously out for the year, but he finishes 8-6, and six, a great whip. He was pitching extremely well before going down. Forrest Whitley is doing pretty good, 2-2. Two two. He's got a 1-2-1 one, one whip. I'm not complaining in his first four starts. And then looking at Cole Hamels, he does get a win, at least 1-1. One one. As we kick off the month of September, 76-63. and 63. And you can just see... The beginning part of our schedule is easy here in the month of September, but the end is tough. So we will have to clean it up if we want to catch the Oakland Athletics and keep the Angels off of our backs. It seems like we're going to have to win this division in order to win, make the playoffs. So hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention It don't matter though, yeah And it don't even matter though, nope